Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the Correct View. This is Sam and me again. We are doing a quick commentary for the meaning of speech. A lowdown for the brief pause there. I have not lost my mind. I was trying to keep both cameras. Other camera, of course, being up there. Normally we start the show, uh, the show with a bunch of small talk and uh, various jovial, happy jokes, and not so much today. Um, Pizzagate. I've been thinking about how to handle this for a minute, because you don't want to go ahead and accuse someone of something as vile <clears throat> as child molestation, or sexual abuse, or any kind of abuse without evidence. And what we have is a very likely scenario that should lead to us asking questions. I mention this because Alex Jones had said that it was it's virtually impossible to get articles published about this topic. So I took it upon myself to see if such was actually the case and wrote an article about it. I've had a number of articles published. I went ahead and I wrote an article about it and tried to get it published. Do you want to know what I found? I found that the major media is absolutely terrified of this story. I was told that it was considered to be a debunked conspiracy theory. Well, let me tell you one of the reasons that it isn't. Okay, how many people listening to this would go ahead and allow that kind of thing to be suggested about them without coming out immediately to address the concerns and proclaim their innocence? I guarantee if you did it to me, I would be talking about uh, cases of slander. Is that better? I would be talking about cases, uh, a slander case, if you were to say something like that about me. This is what we're talking about here. Um, Podesta did not come out and disavow this information. And yet the media outlet that I tried to sell this to, they told me, I got new viewers coming in, we're talking about Pizzagate. I did have the mainstream media telling me that it's been debunked. They won't touch it. I asked one of the editors, no, I'm not going to drop the names because I'm a writer and I have to make money here, okay? But uh, trust me when I tell you I will read the rejection letter on air if I don't get this published somewhere by the time that I post Wednesday or Thursday. How's that? Um, the reason I'm not going to call the actual uh, paper out is because there's more than one of them. And some of them were a no without a reason. So, it's prudent to say this. And this is somebody, I, I know because this is what I'm doing as a main source of income right now is writing. The mainstream media is absolutely terrified of this, and they're saying that it has been dispelled. Well, how's it been dispelled? Now, you can argue that the owner of the pizza shop, he immediately came out and said that he has nothing to hide, even though there are hidden doors in the, uh, in the building. We do live in an age of terror. I'm not going to accuse the man of known child molestation because he has a hidden door in his house. That seems like a mighty big leap. It's the kind of thing that the left does to us, so we don't need to be doing it to them. There's plenty of reasons to hate, uh, or at least dislike the policies of the left, including um, this individual, Podesta. But we're not going to go ahead and accuse him of anything. However, we're going to notice that he hasn't come out and defended himself in the way that you and I would. So I'm going to say this. Let's keep an eye on this from the point of view that says, the, then we're going to move on, that, that says the following. If the media is afraid to touch this and to the level that they are, 
when a man who is accused of something like it didn't deny that he was innocent. Then let's go back to Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson denied that he did anything inappropriate with children and he was asked every question in the world by the media. How many of you remember that? But now, because it's Podesta, we're not allowed to ask those questions when he hasn't publicly come out and claimed his innocence. Something to think about. That's why you listen to the correct views. If I don't have the article published by my next posting, I will read the article on air, and I will read uh, some of the rejection letters that I have had with it. Um, that's the best I can do. That, that's, that, that is, that's, that's what I know. I'm not going to give you more than I know. I'm not going to talk for 25 minutes about something that uh, a rejection letter. But I can tell you from somebody in the industry that I promise you that this is going on. So uh, more on this as we go. I'm going to go to screen share here and uh, get us started with the rest of the show. This here is brought to you by um, The Day the Lights Went Out. It's a book written by D. Allen Roth, A-L-L-A-N. -A uh, make sure, friends, you do check out his book. It's only $2.99 and it's hilariously funny. Petraeus! Petraeus, don't betray us. Uh, this is a wonderful choice for Office. And I'm, I went to his wiki page here, not to use wiki as a major source of... Uh, news, but by and large it's pretty accurate from what I've seen. And just scanning through as I'm doing here on the fact cam behind me and on the screen, let's go back to the beginning of the man's career and let's look at some of what he has done. Uh, Petraeus is a man who has been in battle, but not just warfare. He has a reputation for not wanting to charge into battle when not needed. Having said that, he certainly has experience having served on the front. He's a man who helps rebuild the infrastructure in Iraq and secured the population in Iraq. And that's not only a dangerous job, but it's a job that involves keeping the citizenry as safe as you can. Now, that's not to say that he was in favor of the, uh, the, the, all of the military actions that he had to be a part of, but he was a general and he was doing his job. He, and I know you could argue that's what the Nazis said, but we're not talking about a man who did atrocious things. We're just talking about a man who may have had to have served in a war that he didn't necessarily believe in. But he's been a good man throughout his whole life. He's been a man of, uh, of uh, a man that someone trusts. Okay, he's not a perfect man. Much like me, hard to believe I know it is, uh, he's not a perfect man. And he made a mistake with the affair, with the biographer, and for the amount of information that he allowed to be shared with this biographer and the way in which he stored the information. It did put much of the country at risk. Okay. He paid for it. Just like Clinton paid for it. As far as the emails go, um, she paid for it. She, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying she's an innocent person now. Let's all go hug Hillary. But I'm saying she paid for it definitely. Um, he paid the price. He lost his career. But should he lose everything that everything else he can do in his whole life because he had an affair? If that's the case, then Hillary Clinton should never be allowed to serve in any public office again because of her email scandal, which was far more severe. No one would agree to that either, although it would be nice. <laughs> so, let's look at it, friends. He's certainly a better choice than Rudy Giuliani. A lot of Rudy Giuliani, a lot of blah 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 blah, blah. a lot of Rudy Giuliani's idea are going to lead us into battle and have provoked instances where a, maybe a bit of overreaction is used in the Middle East. And a lot of that has been things that Rudy's kind of been in favor of. So you could make a really strong case here for wanting Petraeus, who is a man of experience on the battlefield and a man who is not just charging into war. So that, I think, is worthy of some serious consideration. 
Uh, moving on, friends, this here is brought to you by Sticker Junkie. Get your stickers made at Sticker Junkie. On uh, checkout, type in uh, Correct Views or The Correct Views, and you will be getting a discount just because you're a listener of the show. You'll also be getting stickers that look better than you ever dreamed. Friends, uh, Dispatch.com. Ohio State campus pulls together with 11 injured assailant dead after the attack. This is another example of gun-free zones being targets. Have you ever stopped to wonder why gun shows are never places where you tend to see armed robbery? Do you notice that banks that have armed guards tend to see less criminal activity? Not even just bank robberies. The bank robberies, just criminal activity. They tend to see a whole lot less than banks that do not. Houses that have NRA stickers on the car in the driveway statistically see a whole lot less criminal activity on their property, including robberies, than somebody with a PETA sticker in their front yard. Gun-free zones attract those that would do us the most harm. And if you believe that those kinds of people are going to go ahead and suddenly turn those guns in because it's illegal, then ask yourself how that worked for cocaine. Ask yourself how that worked for crack and heroin and LSD and PC and blah 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 blah. It didn't. And when, when you try to make it do so by establishing a place where someone cannot have guns, then what you end up with is this. Because remember, if you made it illegal to own guns, well, it's currently illegal to shoot people at a, at, a, at a campus. They didn't listen when they shot the people at the campus to the law, so why are they going to listen to the law when the law says they have to turn the gun in? They're just going to break the law and shoot the people anyway. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. You can tell, because I did. Um, the alarm rang, sending the students and staff members of the engineering buildings and labs streaming into the courtyard and onto the sidewalks of Ohio State University's North Campus to what was supposed to be their safe place, but it wasn't. As hundreds of students and faculty and staff members hung around West 19th Avenue and Watts Hall waiting for the all clear, horror came calling on campus at 9.52 a.m. and it came by way of a man in a silver Honda. Student Martin Schneider first heard an engine rev. The student, I'm going to butcher this poor name, Aga, Angus Schumann Kapil heard tires screech and several watches the Honda jumped the curb, sending bodies flying into the air. Police would still later say that the driver, it says, careened into the crowd intentionally, no question, because the suspect later identified the student Abdul Razik Ali Artan. Interesting a logistics management major of Somali descent had another weapon besides his car. He clutched a butcher knife. At first, though, no one knew that. Witnesses said that dozens originally ran toward the car thinking the driver might be injured in the crash. And they said he was dazed. He jumped from the Civic. He was like a crazed animal. And uh, he was determined he seemed like there was uh, one reason to do as much damage as he could continues that Tanner Serino, a junior studying in welding engineering, also saw Tom jump from the car, swinging and slashing wildly with the knife. When another student walked onto the car to help, Serino said the attacker tried to grab his backpack and slash the kid from behind. Yet Artan didn't say a word as he attacked, Ghazi said. Ghazi was one of at least 14 people who called 911, and like most everyone else, he ran for his life. Uh, he was shot and killed by, uh, the, the, excuse me, Artan took off straight down 19th Street, my bad. Still wielding his blade, but he didn't get far. OSU police officer Alan Harjuko, a 28-year-old who has been with the department since January the 15th, confronted Artan, who shot and killed him there, west of College Road and near an alley, just a minute later at 9.53 a.m. So look, when you have these nightmare scenarios. You have people bringing weapons into gun-free zones because they know full and well that the average, the average uh, 
the average student isn't going to have a weapon to defend themselves with. Now, listen, I know, I know partying goes on on campuses. I understand that. And we have laws in place against law-abiding gun owners handling or having a weapon when they've been intoxicated. Okay, so that's not the problem here. Responsible gun ownership, according to state laws, which should be in adherence with the Constitution, are the way to go. A few students armed there could do a remarkable amount of good. You could even take it one step further for those of you who think that the school could have a problem maybe with somebody going out partying and having a gun on them. Okay, how about this? <clears throat> do you remember when you were in grade school? I don't know if they had it where, where the listeners were. Let me know in the comment line if they did. Junior police, JP duty. And it was a group of students who were in charge of running the crosswalks in the city where I live. And they would raise and lower these the big wooden gates that were attached to metal poles in the sidewalk. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here? Um, what if you have the adult version of that? A number of students who pass a certain test outlined by the college to be allowed to carry firearms. And a few of these students would be in each area armed during classes. And you would have a few of them during each of the time periods that the school is open. How about that for an idea? Something's got to be better than this, friends, because this is this is resulting in madness, these, these weapon-free, gun-free zones. All right, friends, electoral voters deluge with death threats in uh, multiple states. I covered this in an article I wrote for Blasting News as well as on the media speak, so I'm not going to go into it in depth, but uh, listen to this. I'll put a bullet in your brain. Uh, they were uh, the Hillary backers called the electoral voters hateful bigots. And basically they want the electoral college to go against the vote of the people in the state in order for them to be loyal to the country. In other words, if the electoral college listens to you, the voter, and does on the state level what they pledge to do based on the vote, they're heroes to the left. Now, let me ask you a question. Does that sound like a, a, a republic that you want to live in? Or does that sound like a third world country? Why even vote if that would be the case? Now, I am in favor of one person, one vote, not having the electoral college around, but also not having it based on states. Everyone who votes gets one vote in the entire country. I would be in favor of that. But we have an electoral college. Many, many people don't know why, and it's not the greatest system in the world. But it's to prevent the mega, sit, the mega uh, cities in large Los Angeles, New York City kind of places from having all of the say because of how big they are based on their state. Well, if you eliminated the state requirement, then you wouldn't need the Electoral College anymore. And that would also prevent this. But anyway, uh, they are existing to equal out the balance of the vote of the country by giving a certain number of votes to each state. The Electoral College members are in favor of representing the actual votes of the people in the state. That's why your vote does matter until people like Jill Stein come around. And then, uh, well, who knows? <coughs> one of um, one of the sixteen. Uh, oh, I love pop-ups. I absolutely thank you so much. So I'm so happy to say thank you. WND, you suck. One of Michigan's sixteen electors will be called upon to cast a vote validating the election of Donald Trump in the Electoral College. He had testified on video that he and others in the state are receiving dozens and dozens of death threats from Hillary Clinton supporters urging them to switch their vote to Clinton. Isn't that interesting? Okay, look, look at the number of red here. I saw a meme that said, uh, can you hear me now, making fun of the Verizon commercial. Look at all that red. Okay, Donald Trump has won this by an absolute landslide. He has a full mandate. And to not notice that is to simply deny facts beyond all accountability and reason. And this is something done to hurt his mandate. I mentioned this also on Blasting News in an article I wrote. 
It's not done because they think that they're going to be able to win. Instead, it's done to hurt the reputation and mandate that Donald Trump has rightfully earned upon entering the White House, friends. And that here does bring us to the dumb deal of the day. And it's easy to do when you're talking about Jill Stein. Because she wants to be, uh, she probably wants to run for Democrat four years from now. And she's using this as her great springboard about how she stood up for liberty. But no, she's not getting the dum de dum de dum de of the day. That is going to Chelsea's uh, husband, Chelsea Clinton's husband. Used Clinton Foundation money to benefit his business. Now, what's funny about this is this was done during a time period that Clinton was planning the inevitable run. So what you've got is this idiot doing something that he knew very well could become a political nightmare for her. At a time, the worst time ever. And proceeds to do just that. This is from truthfeed.com. You gotta love the dumb deal of the day. Ain't this guy a banker? I guarantee she ain't missing with no broke. Yeah, you guys, I hate that song. WikiLeaks bombshell Chelsea's husband used the Clinton Foundation to fund his business. Everybody in that family puts their knees ahead of the other one. That's what's part of the problem. Um, the corruption and scandal are growing by the second with fraudulent Clinton Foundation. Recently, we learned that Chelsea used the foundation to pay for her lavish wedding and to fund her lifestyles of the rich and famous life. And now we're learning of her scheming husband that has also used the foundation to benefit his business. No wonder less than 10% of the money taken into the Clinton Foundation goes to charity. The Clintons are draining it for personal use. Less than 10% of the money? Paid for the wedding, no less. Well, the Clintons and their foundation, and it's, it's a disgusting money laundering scam. What's even more laughable about this is the, the lack of foresight that was used in it as a whole. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. I mean, how could you do something that could so easily jeopardize the run of someone for President of the United States of America in such a way, it's supposed to be your mother and or mother-in-law. And this kind of foresight wasn't given. And it matters because we could be looking at Chelsea, God forbid, trying to seek some kind of office in the future. And friends, that would be a nightmare. Although her, her moral compass is a little bit better than her family's, at least thus far, but she is still young. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I. V. DeGangie signing off. Look at all the listeners. I love you guys. Do me a favor. Please donate if you can at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. You can do it through PayPal. You guys help pay for computers. You pay for lights. You pay for the time that it takes me to do the show. If you donate any amount, any amount at all, you get these two stickers. Um, they're autographed, and I will send them to you. Most people are probably going to want the bottom one more than the top, but let me know. Please donate. The correct views at hotmail.com. Throw it into PayPal. Appreciate it. Good night, friends. God bless.